as the Joker would say. And here we go. Hello and thank you for clicking on this video I'll be sharing a different kind of experience. As you probably saw from the thumbnail, I say goodbye to one of my favorite IEMs in my possession, which is the Fat Freaks Maestro SE Universal IEM. Yes, you heard me right. I love the sound of the Maestro SE so much that I requested for it to be a custom IEM, which is my first ever custom IEM. So in this video, we will find out if going custom changes anything from my experience with the Universal Maestro SE, but also a little bit on the journey that has led me to this point. But before we begin, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Fat Freak for providing and arranging this amazing experience, but I'm not paid or asked in any way to share my experience and me wanting to share this experience is all on my own volition and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Without further ado, a quick recap. So if you haven't checked out my video on my conversation with Fat Freak, I'll leave links in the description down below. But essentially, I was stopping by Singapore and I thought I'd stop by Fat Freak to not only have a conversation with the team and to test out some gears, but to also convert my Maestro SE from Universal to Custom Fit. Ooh, that Grand Maestro from that trip is still on my mind, but I digress. So yes, Fat Freak does offer ear impressions services if you're doing it in their office. Otherwise, you'd have to get your impressions done by an audiologist. I have a separate dedicated video on that topic, but just sharing this particular process, which is a fairly simple procedure involving a trained personnel shooting mold into your ear through a syringe. And once the mold hardens, you essentially get a physical mold of the inside of your ear. They will put a small piece of bud into your ear to protect your eardrums, and it's tied to a string, which also helps in pulling the mold out of your ear. It may seem a little daunting at first, seeing all this medical like equipment lying around and that freaking large syringe which could easily be mistaken as a pleasure tool for some but if you hate syringes this might freak you out but breathe calm down there's no needles involved it may be a little bit uncomfortable at first as they pump that mold into your ear as it starts filling up but after a few seconds it goes away as the mold would conform to the shape of your ear and once it's all pulled out you'd be left with a physical mold of your ears and yep there will be earwax involved so it's not going to look pretty so cleaning your ears before you go into the service would save you a little bit of embarrassment you do have to turn in your existing universal IEM to fat freak for them to reshell it to custom and once it's all passed over it's all about the waiting game especially in the custom IEM world and these customs can take up to months to make depending on the company's schedule and orders so not knowing when it's coming or what's happening to your IEMs during these times can be nerve-wracking so it does take a lot of patience and I'll be honest that I was a bit anxious at times myself but at the end of the day it's all about communication and trust from both parties and their chat implementation on their website really helps. And I'm really grateful for Ben and Yo for their patience in answering my queries. And when all is said and done, Fat Freak really delivered here. But before I reveal the final product, let's talk about some other Fat Freak treats as well. I also sent in my Maestro Mini to get the mesh grill at the nozzle because the first version of the Maestro Mini does not come with one. So you have this exposed balanced armature which raises some concern with dust going in. But since then, they've implemented a few new design updates, one of which is of course having that mesh grill at the nozzle. The two pin connection is now also a little bit more recessed and the resin shell now has has this very subtle transparency where you can see through the drivers if you focus hard enough but from first glance it's black but actually it's not as black as the original Maestro Mini. It also now comes with this twisting metal case which looks and feels really nice and sturdy and I'm truly grateful to Fat Freak for putting in this little touch to the case. Oh, I love it so much. And at the same time, I guess I can't change my channel name anytime soon. But of course, your case will come only with the Fat Freak logo. But I actually like that they now have a case with their logo on it because the fat box is still missing that identity. And I'd pick the metal case over the fat box because it's much more compact. But I can still see the use of the fat box. So it's a matter of what you need the case for. It's a battle between maximum security versus compactness. Of course, for the metal case, it's still comes with that twisting sound 
and inside the case houses a cleaning tool and some silica capsule to absorb moisture and in there it's big enough to house your IEMs and cable. So for the Maestro Mini itself, does the mesh make any difference to the Maestro Mini sound? I've had a full video of the Maestro Mini if you'd like to check it out and in that video I mentioned the following. Trumpets doesn't sound as airy or open as they could be. The vocals, while sounding fuller and weightier, is missing that sharpness to it, that clarity. And in the comments and some feedback on forums, they talk about the treble highs, which baffled me at first. And now, upon listening to this version, I see what they're saying now. The treble is indeed elevated, and it helps with the presence of details, but I put a mild caution now for treble sensitive people. However, while resolution is a touch better than what I had before, but I still say it's a very small step behind its competitors and I feel it's limited by its driver configuration but the base presentation is still one that trumps all its competitors and the Maestro Mini still remains as its spot in giving you a preview of what its bigger brothers sound like. Speaking of which, this is the moment of truth, the moment all of us have been waiting for. This is the custom Maestro SE and look at that. Imagine me repeating the words wow and just admiring it for its looks alone without even listening to it because that faceplate is drop dead gorgeous. This is the Burl Composite Faceplate and I've got the Fat Freak Faceplate collection in the video if you'd like to check it out and the thing about this kind of pattern is that you never know what you're going to get or how it'll turn out but the color scheme will always remain the same. You've got this dark greenish blue with the browns and layers and for me I feel this is a true representation of the Maestro SE. There's just so many layers to the sound but it's supported by its biggest foundation which is the bass which is represented in the blue and that gold MSC and Fat Freak logo just sort of blending in, in the background but showing itself in some lighting. I know I'm reading too much into one faceplate but this faceplate is just drop dead gorgeous. So amazing job from the team at Fat Freak. I actually showed this to people like I want people to see how good this thing looks because it doesn't attract any attention because of its subtlety but when you pause to look at it it's breathtaking. Of course for its shell it's looking like an alien with all these weird curves and contours and it's looking massive but that's what a custom in-ear monitor looks like and this is essentially how my ears look like so everyone will have a slightly different shape or contours when you get your own custom IEMs and the only ears these IEMs will go into will be mine only and having a custom IEM is supposed to give you the best seal and fit without the need for ear tips so showing you how this fits in my ears so it's not the same way as fitting in a universal IEM. In order to get this to fit I have to come in at an angle and twist it in and it'll just slide right in and imagine the feeling you have when your ears are blocked out by water when you go in for a swim that's the closest feeling I can describe wearing the custom IEM at least for me personally because it provides passive noise isolation due to the fact this thing is essentially filling up your ear and it'll just sit there. You'll only feel the IEMs when you move your mouth around but in terms of comfort it's definitely a lot more comfortable than wearing the universal version of this IEM because previously the size of the Maestro SE does give me a bit of pressure in some areas of my ears. With the custom MSE once it's in I don't feel any pressure whatsoever so I could listen for hours when the music is on but not going to lie it did take me a while to get used to that ear block feeling and every time you take it out it's like clearing your ears from all that water and your level of comfort I believe would depend on getting used to this feeling. Before I get into sound let's talk a little bit about the cable because the Maestro SE now comes with this stock silver cable which has interchangeable terminations which is leaps and bounds better than the original stock cable it came with. However to pair up with the beauty of this IEM I got this monster of an IEM cable the nice HCK dragon scale and it is is to me the perfect pairing for the Maestro SE in terms of looks and sound. I'm not going to lie, the dragon scale is chonky as a dragon's tail, but that blue, that black, that chonkiness is what I would describe the IEM itself, hence why I feel they belong to each other. Now, the most important part of this whole experience, 
what does a custom in-ear monitor sound like in comparison with the universal version? Are there any difference? Is it better? Is it worse? Let's explore. This may sound like an exaggeration, but having these customs has helped me understand what sound monitoring feels like to a certain degree. With the MSE, there are subtle differences that I hear between listening to a dongle or a desktop stack. For example, I can get my Fio KA2 or Moondrop Dawn to power the MSE, although I have to really bring up the volume. Imagine on my Dawn, I'm on 30 out of 100 when normally I'm on 18 for others on the 4.4 millimeter termination, which says a lot about driving the MSEs, but listening on the dongles sounds different than listening to the MSE using the topping A90 and D90 stack. And it showed me that even though you can give an audio gear volume doesn't necessarily mean it's powered to its full potential. Going from a topping stack to the Hyperman EF400 has a slightly different experience, which is changing my perception that all source delivers the same experience. But that's a whole other video. The difference between a good or poorly recorded song is more noticeable. And I know that some people have more sensitive ears that they can listen to these differences using any other universal IEMs, but I started noticing the difference once I've put these customs on. As for the sound profile of the MSE itself, similar to the Maestro Mini, I said this on the MSE's treble. That I felt the treble was lacking a little bit in air compared to the Z1R. It doesn't sound as open. And on my unit with the customs, I'm getting a touch more treble presence, a little bit more air, and it really helped open up the sound a little bit to the point I would put a mild caution for treble sensitive people when I wouldn't have given that on the universal version. However, on the other side of the spectrum, I feel that the bass impact, while still strong, is not as impactful as I remembered it to be, and the vocals sound a little bit leaner too. It will still wipe the floor for its sub bass performance, and many other aspects of its presentation still remain with the MSE. I mean the imaging still gives me chills, and it still gives me a concert-like experience, but as an overall, it is a sound that suits my personal sound preference, and I'm just having a blast listening to my music with the custom MSEs. So to wrap it all up, at the beginning of this journey, of mine in the audio world, I would have never fathomed the possibility of ever owning a custom in-ear monitor. But this is where I'm truly grateful to all of you for watching and supporting me in my adventures, which has helped me to get to this point, and to Fat Freak for supporting a small channel like mine and making my dreams come true with these custom in-ear monitors. If I ended my audio journey at this point, I'd have no regrets because I now have something that is suited for me and specifically for my ears and that feeling, once you've achieved it, is something special. However, in this hobby, the hunt never ends. Curiosity will always get the better of me and I'm always going to want to hear what other audio gears sound like. But right here, right now, with the custom Maestro SE from Fat Freak, I couldn't be happier. Thank you Fat Freak and thank you all. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from my experience. And as always, I look forward to sharing more experiences with all of you. Until the next video, happy listening.